Hi there, I'm Backwater Jay. Uh, okay, I know I've threatened on multiple occasions to cease and desist on the ride sharing videos, uh, but the times we're in and the politics thereof make it a harder and harder thing. Now, if you're not in California, this doesn't directly apply to you yet, uh, but Prop 22 will set a precedent for better or for worse, a precedent that should have been established by the State Assembly last year with AB5, which went into effect on January 1st. Uh, to make a long story short, Uber, Lyft, and any number of other gig economy companies have continued in blatant defiance of California law, misclassifying their employees as contractors when state law has specifically established that they are employees, and eligibles for such basic rights as minimum wage, unemployment, paid sick leave, and medical benefits. Folks, it's basically a meme at this point, a joke, and yet the fact remains a good portion of the populace still takes big ride sharing's company line as indisputable fact. And small wonder, at this point they've spent the exorbitant amount of $100 million of riders' fares and drivers' potential earnings on frivolous court cases and ad campaigns trying to convince everyone they're acting in the driver's best interest. They're not. Far from it. It's a blatant grab for profits that they shouldn't have had any right to in the first place, based on a business model designed around exploiting the working class. But let's play devil's advocate at this point and look at their so-called concessions to driver benefits. First off, the quote-unquote guaranteed minimum wage is a joke. It only takes into account time spent on an actual ride, not time spent on the clock waiting for a ride, and in many cases driving to more desirable areas, not to mention the often substantial time spent driving back from areas drivers didn't want to go in the first place. This is actually costing drivers money on gas and vehicle expenses and can often account to several day hours out of each workday, uncompensated because that's where the rides happen to take you. Let me reiterate, on the clock for zero compensation and expenses on the driver's dime. Uh, how many of you contractors out there would be happy to work hours each day for nothing just because that's what your employer happened to need? No? You'd probably just bail on them and let them find some other idiot to meet their unreasonable demands? Then good for you. And when the really slow times come, this will protect you not at all. As, as of, for instance, the first month or so of COVID lockdown, I would often work a full 8 or 10 hour day and only get a few rides. There were days I made under 20 bucks, and this would not change at all with the proposed revisions. Now, Uber in particular has made some noise about creating a fund for driver benefits, uh, but you can be sure they don't intend to dip into their profit margin for that, nor to raise rates to a reasonable level. No, that's all money coming out of drivers' pockets because ultimately it's the companies that determine what the driver gets. And historically, we've seen rider fares go down while the companies take a higher and higher percentage of it. On the positive side, I'll admit that Uber's driver concessions, at least here in California, are marginally tolerable. It's almost enough to belay the fact these concessions are blatantly in effect to convince drivers that the existing system is a better one, at least until November when their votes are counted. I expect we'll see a major about face from both companies should Prop 22 pass because they no longer need to play nice to get public opinion on their side. However, we are still required to wear masks, which as a contractor should be our right to comply or deny. We are still not allowed true liberty to set our own rates. Uh, yes, Uber has instigated a system where you can elect to charge two or three times their going rate, but in reality, what rider is going to pay those rates when there's people on the road opting for the normal rate? If I charge twice the going rate and get half the rides, then guess what? I haven't made a cent more. No, what a contractor needs is a truly fluid system where we can set precisely the charge per mile and per minute. This truly puts the power in the driver ha driver's hands as most will opt for a reasonable rate. We're still not told the exact conditions of the contract up front, even with Uber. We know a ballpark drop-off and a ballpark payoff, but folks, in the real world that is next to nothing and we're given mere seconds to decide. The fact is across the board we're being treated as employees and should be compensated as such. That means, among other things, vehicle expenses, overtime, sick leave, paid time off, unemployment, etc. The sole reason Prop 22 has been pushed onto the ballot is because ride-sharing companies refuse to revise their business models to reflect common practices of fair treatment of employees. They claim that their drivers are not central to their business model. Really? Take all the drivers off the road, and where does that leave ride-sharing? Bankrupt. Dead in the water. And to make matters worse, the companies are using strong-arm tactics, first threatening to shut down, and then threatening to lay off 80 to 90 percent of their workforce in California if their chosen outcome is not achieved. The likely fact that it's blatant posturing doesn't stop these sort of tactics from working on a largely uninformed or intentionally misinformed populace. Uh, for example, that 80 to 90% they're talking about, these are the part-timers. 
These are the folks that amount to a minority of the rides given because they're only working a few hours a day, if that. Uh, the drivers that would be staying on, if that went into effect, are the full-time drivers, the ones that are treating this as a serious, normal job. Um, so don't expect that to impact uh, your ride wait times or rider experience as much as they want to um, act like it will. Um, in any case, uh, getting back on my train of thought here, they'll try to convince you your freedoms as a driver will be reduced. Wrong. Literally nothing changes for you as a driver if you are classified as an employee versus a contractor unless your employer decides to make that decision for you. The only one threatening to reduce your freedoms are the ride-sharing companies themselves. The only thing that the law will change is to ensure you're given fair compensation for services rendered. They'll try to convince you their business models don't support treating their employees as employees. Guess what? It doesn't make them contractors just because big ride sharing says they are. If the business model doesn't work, the answer is not to defy the law, but to change the business model. I've been saying this since day one. Uh, if these companies were truly so short-sighted or greedy as not to anticipate compliance to basic labor laws, they deserve to go under or to adapt to more ethical treatment of their workforce. Yes, riders, this means that your rates may go up by some small amount, but really you have to count the costs of the backs you tread upon, and cheaper rides come at a cost. The less favorably drivers are treated, the less of them will be on the road. This means longer wait times and potentially unfavorable experiences as the drivers on the road are unhappy and stressed, hoping they'll pull in enough for this week to make ends meet. Folks, don't let big business reel you in with their scare tactics. Vote a resounding no on Prop 22 in California and tell them we've had it up to here with this. Let them know you'd rather take a taxi than kowtow to their company line. As a subsistence rideshare driver, you have my thanks in advance. I'm Backwater Jay.